Hey everybody, hope everyone's staying safe and staying in for this, uh, till we wait out this, the end of this virus or whatever, uh, depending on what news you watch or, or what you see, it could, it could end in a couple of weeks and get back to some sort of normalcy, or it could go on till the end of the year or, or later. But anyway, we're, we're still, I still feel privileged to get to bring you this, uh, a devotional at least once a week and uh, just share a quick thought of uh, something that might be positive and, and will help us as we're dealing with staying in and, and, and dealing with our everyday life. Uh, a lot of things we're here today, this day and time as we as we pray and as we think about this virus and the, the thing that this country and this world is going through. And we seem to always take comfort in the fact that God is in charge and that is a great thing to take comfort in because he is in charge and he he uh, he's stronger than any virus or anything this world is going to uh, throw at us or cast upon us. Uh, just want to look a little deeper at that today, and and as we think of uh, of God being in charge, I just want to think for a minute about uh, about our the relationship that we have with God. Uh, sometimes we we we're told to fear God, and we should fear God because we can see, as we read in the Bible, what God's capable of, and why we can't may not be able to understand how powerful he is. Uh, we understand that he is, he is, uh, what we can understand is that, that he is powerful and he expects us to do what he, he wants us to do. And, uh, and we can read in times that in the Bible, the people that didn't do this and what the consequences was. And then we know that we know by what the Bible tells us that God truly is in charge. But as far as our relationship with God, I want to make sure that as we think of God being the almighty, powerful being that he is, that we're not, uh, don't think of him as someone sitting there just waiting for us to mess up or, or being so fearful every day that we're not going to do everything perfectly to the letter and that God is going to, uh, uh, not love us anymore or not be, not, uh, not be happy with what we're doing. Uh, in Matthew 6, 9, as, uh, as uh, Jesus is teaching on the ser in the Sermon on the Mount about how to pray, he says, uh, Matthew 6, 9, After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And I'm just going to stop right there, and I'm, we're not going to read the rest of the prayer in, in this presentation. Uh, but just want to realize that God, our relationship with God is like a father, uh, like a father-child relationship. Uh, so what does that mean to us as Christians? Well, one thing certainly it means that as a child that we are one of his heirs and, and just like an earthly child will inherit his father's kingdom or his father's things, uh, we will inherit our father's kingdom. So let's think of that as God is our father. And also what I really want to deal with today is uh, the unconditional love that fathers have for us. Um, very hard to be comforted when we think of God as some, someone up there just waiting for us to mess up or waiting for us to make a mistake so that he, his wrath can you know, come down upon us. But when we think of God as a father, then we realize that uh, as we think of our own fathers, uh, maybe someone who is always willing to help, maybe someone that we would go to uh, in any time of need, maybe with things that we wouldn't go to anybody else with, we would go to our, uh, our fathers with, uh, my father passed away when I was, uh, almost four years old. So I didn't really know my father, but I was very fortunate enough to have a, a good stepfather and later on have a good father-in-law that, uh, not only fulfilled the, the part of a father in my life, but, uh, also taught me what a father should be so I could feel do that in my children's life um, But as I as I think of, of the love that those fathers had and how whenever I had a problem I would go to them uh, never expecting that uh, They would turn against me or, or never expecting they were just waiting for me to mess up or or do something wrong And as I think of the same relationship with God. It's, it's comforting to know that it's it is a father uh, son relationship that we have with God. Also, if you are a father, think of your own children and uh, the unconditional love you have for them. I always try to think, uh, is there anything that one of my children could do that would make me stop loving them? Well, there's a lot of things that, that, that kids can do that that uh, 
we may not approve of, may disappoint us, whatever, but uh, nothing that can make, uh, make us stop loving them. Also, nothing that would make us stop wanting the best for them. So as we think about our relationship with God being our Father, I hope it brings us comfort today in the, in the fact that, that uh, we can go to Him with our problems just like we would in our earthly Father. Um, and that, that he loves us and there's nothing as, as evil as we are as human beings. There's nothing we can do that would make God stop loving us and stop wanting what's best for us. As a matter of fact, uh, everything God has done uh, in scriptures, uh, even up to giving his own son to die for us on the cross, is simply because he loves us. Uh, this, this is what makes God different from uh, a lot of the Roman and Greek and pagan gods that we read about or, or we find about, they seem to be gods that that people are trying to appease, people that they're afraid of, uh, afraid they're going, if they don't uh, do exactly what the, that the God wants, that he's going to do something evil against them. We don't have to worry about this with our God because not only is God in charge of all this and everything that goes on, but he is a God that loves us as a father and is in charge of this. Um, I don't know if everybody's had an example of a good father in their life or 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 anything but just in case you don't know that uh, let's go to matthew 7 uh 9 through 11 and this may be hopefully part of what uh, jesus says in this sermon on the mount will help us with this i'm gonna read it and then we'll talk about it just for a minute or what man is there of you whom if his son asked bread would he give him a stone or if he ask a fish will he give him a serpent if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? So, just in closing, uh, not only do we have God and our relationship with him being a Father that loves us, but our relationship with God is that not only is he a Father that loves us, but he is a perfect Father that loves us. Uh, he he knows exactly what we need he knows what's best for us uh, and, and as we go through not only this virus thing this is uh i was talking to someone today we, we're not preaching anything different because there's a virus out there we've always preached and taught that we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow but but we do know uh, who's in charge of tomorrow and we know that god knows what's going to happen tomorrow and that, that he will take care of us i hope this has been helpful today to uh Think of God as we think of him being in charge. Also think of him as being a father, not not just some uh, almighty being that is distant from us and, and is up there waiting for us to make a mistake or that we have to appease or worry that, that uh, you know, he, he's going to find favor in us or not. But hopefully we can be comforted in thinking of, of God as being our father. If you bow with me, we'll have a word of prayer and then we'll close. Most high and holy God, we're so thankful that we can thank you as a father. We're so thankful that you loved us enough to create us. We're so thankful you loved us enough to create this world that we're in. Father, we love you so much, and, and we we appreciate the, the fact that uh, you are the perfect father and that you've loved us, loved us enough to give your son to die on the cross so we can spend eternity with you. Father, as always, we think about the uncertainty of life. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, Father, but we know that you do. And, Father, we take comfort in the fact that whatever happens to us on this earth can never take away what is waiting for us as we are in your kingdom. Father, it's in Jesus, your son's name we pray. Amen.